All right, hello everybody. This is going to be a, a fairly short video that's going to introduce much of what we're going to be doing on Friday in your lab, at least in terms of getting your data set up. So the purpose of the lab on Friday will be to explore different types of data formats and in a sense kind of look at how and what we can do with them. So what I'd like you to do, and again I talked about this today in class, but I'm going to, I want to kind of emphasize this, I want you to pull together data along a theme. Now your theme may be geographic area, Butler County, might be a topic, uh, forests and forest cover, or it might be an issue, invasive species. What I'm going to ask you to do is find a field data set, that is a raster data set, and that can be imagery, uh, NAIP, which is Agricultural Imagery Program. Um, it could be continuous surface, like elevation, or it could be a categorical surface, like land use. I'm also going to ask you to find one of each point, line, and polygon object data sets. Um, for example, points might be windmill locations, lines might be power lines, and polygons might be conservation areas. So we're going to add all of those and we're going to look a little bit at uh, ArcGIS.com. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so I'm going to assume you can log in to your ArcGIS.com account. I'm logged in here. What I'd like you to do is click on Map. The Map interface will open up. I'm going to actually turn this off, get rid of a previous data set that I'm going to add in just a minute. We'll talk about how I did that. But you can see a base map when we begin. And again, I just want to point out a couple of areas. This is your table of contents area here to the left. In the center is your map. You have a very basic toolbar here. You have a search window. And then you have some of our basic tools over here. What we are going to be doing is using all of the main functionalities of adding data today. So the first thing I want to do is introduce the search option. And so certainly you can zoom around, you can pan, zoom in, zoom out, but I can also do a search here for geographic location. So for example, Butler County, PA. There it comes up, and I'm going to click on it. And it will zoom in to Butler County. Now, what I next need to do is add data to this map. And what I want to do is not add base map data, although I could certainly change, by the way, the background of this. I can click on the drop down here and add any number of base layers. But base layers are cartographic layers. They don't necessarily allow you to do anything with them. So I'm going to leave my base layer the way it is, but I'm going to add data now. And so I'm going to go to the drop down here and add. And you'll notice that there are different ways, different areas that I can add data from. I can search for layers. I can browse the Living Atlas, uh, which is Living Atlas is Esri's curated data sets. I can go to any external web map service, or I can upload data from my computer. Okay? I can also add map notes, and that's really a way of creating new geometries. So we're going to start with the curated data from the Living Atlas layer. So I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice that there's quite a bit of data here, almost 5,000 data sets. And what I want to do first is I want to filter this a little bit. So if I click on the filter option right here, what I'm going to see is all of the things that are available. And you'll notice first there's categories, and then there's regions, and then there's item types. So in other words, I can click on item type, and you'll notice that there are imagery layers, map images, tile layers, and feature layers. Now, what we're going to start with are tile layers. So I'm going to click on that. And then what I'm going to do is go up here, and I'm going to click here to turn only the area that I'm interested in. Now understand, when I turn this on, what this does is you notice that my layers have really shrunk. This is saying only data that includes Butler County. Now, the 
doesn't mean you'll notice world data certainly covers this. But if it's data that's only in New Mexico, it's not going to show up. So now I've got all of this layer, uh, address, and I'm going to add in forest. And for example, we get this data set. Okay, that's a tile data. And I look at that and I go, well, I'm not sure that's really what I want. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to clear off the tiles. Okay, I'm going to clear that one off. And you'll notice that more come up. And I want to make a distinction between tiled and non-tiled data. Tiled data and non-tiled data are both potentially raster data. Tiled data means that it's smaller pieces that we can extract. And a lot of times for some of you that are running your computer light, that's a good idea. Especially also if you have a very slow internet connection. In my case, I don't have that problem, so I'm going to look at this one. And you'll notice right here, this little symbol says it is a raster data set. In this case, it's an imagery data set. But in this case, it's also one that I can manipulate. So I'm going to use the forest type. I'm going to click Add to that. Now, along the bottom, by the way, this little symbol right here says that it's authoritative. That means that the SRI has evaluated it, and it is a, a valuable and valid data set. We can get in a little bit later on what that means. But I'm going to add it. And you'll notice that this is, in fact, all of forest types. And I'm going to click on them in a minute for our area. So I'm going to close the filter, go back to here. Now, once I've added it, you'll see it here in my table of contents. Now I'm going to click on the legend, and you'll see all of these different types of forest. Not all of them are present in our area. This is, in a sense, I'm going to zoom way out. This is all of the forest cover in the United States. And so again, considerably different types of forest. So again, I'm going to go back to Butler County, PA. And so I've got, in this case, categorical raster data. Now, I'm going to add another data set. I'm going to go back to my contents and click Add. You don't have to do this. Remember, you can have one or the other. And I'm going to go back to my Living Atlas layer. And in this case, what I am interested in here now is I'm going to look at, um, let's see, what do we want to do here? How about we look at elevation? Type in elevation. And we're going to see all sorts of different data here. But I'm interested in the ground surface elevation. Again, this is authoritative. Looks like it's good data. It's very current. And 30 meters is pretty good. Pretty easy to deal with. So I'm going to add that. Now, you'll notice that this turned really dark. And so it's not terribly useful. Um, if I look at the contents area, it shows my range of elevations. And so I need to make that more meaningful. So I'm going to go back to my contents area, and I'm going to change how it looks. So I'm going to click on the three dots here, and I'm going to go down to my image display. I'm going to click on that. And I'm interested in this now as a hill shade. And again, you'll notice all of these things are possible with it. Slope degree, slope percent, and then grayscale hill shade. That's what I'm interested in. And I'm going to apply it. And now you see it this way. I'm going to close it. One of the things, though, that has changed, you'll notice that now I don't have the elevation. I simply have a color scheme for it. But I'm really more interested in seeing it this way. So now I have my two raster data sets. So now I'm interested in getting some vector data. And again, I'm going to do it by adding data. But in this case, rather than the living atlas, I'm going to use the search for layers. And not my content, because this will be just what I have on my. But I'm going to look at my ArcGIS online. This is essentially all the sorts of stuff that you or me or anybody else has put out there. So some of it is authoritative. Some of it is not. And so here we go, we're going to change this, and I'm going to say, oh, let's try, um, let's try Pennsylvania State Parks. 
All right, so State Parks and Trails, Pennsylvania State Parks and Trails. Now let's click at that and see what it actually is. The PLA, PA Local Parks Access Points, PA State Park Access Points, Water Trails, Rails to Trails, Hiking Trails. Now, what you'll notice here is this is multiple data sets. It is not authoritative. Right here, this little symbol, though, means that it's a feature class, that is points, lines, or polygons. And so I'm going to click Add. Well, now I get a lot of stuff added to here. But what I don't get, and I do want to at least point this out, and I'm going to turn off, I'm going to go back to my details, and I'm going to change my base map because I want to see kind of where I am again. And so I'm going to use the topographic. And we'll give it a minute. It will, it will think about that. And I'm going to turn off my surface elevation and my trees. And what I notice is that I see all the trails around Moraine State Park, but I don't see the state park's boundary. And so I'm going to go look for one more data set, because I want to know actually the state park boundaries. I've got my trails. I think that's kind of interesting. And I actually have my access points. You'll notice in my legend, I have access points, state park trails, rails to trails, hiking trails, water, rails to trails, and hiking. And so I want to add one more set of data. And I'm going to now go in, again, search for layers. But in this case, what I'm going to look for is state park boundaries. I'm going to click on that again. This is a different one, and it's that in this case, Pennsylvania State Park Boundaries. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to add that to the map. And hopefully what we're going to see in my details, let's go to our content again. And you'll notice here, this is exactly what I want to see. Notice that these are all black, and this one's grayed out, and I don't see it here. So what I'm going to have to do is change its visibility. I'm going to click on the three dots, and what visibility means is some data is too detailed to show at different scales. And so in this case, I'm going to go to this, and the area right now, it shows that it's good from this scale out to this scale, but the little black arrow is where I am right now. So if I slide this a little farther, there are the outlines. Okay, that's setting the visibility range. So now I've got my polygons, my points, my lines, and my raster data sets. Everything's in good shape. For all of these data sets, I also have the ability to look at their attributes. Okay, state parks, Here's the information, the attribute fields for them. On Friday, we're going to look a little bit more at that. I'm going to turn off that now. But so far, we've at least gotten our data in to our map. And now the last thing that I'd like you to do is save your map. So I'm going to click on Save and Save As. I'm going to put in a title. And for you, I want you to put in your last name, underscore, first name, underscore, week two, intro, GIS. Now you have to put a tag in this, and so I'm saying state parks. That's my theme, okay? I'm interested in kind of forest cover and the state parks. I've got all that in, and now I'm going to say save map. Okay, so now I've saved my map. The next thing that I need you to do, and this is the last thing for this exercise, is we're going to click on Share. And what I need you to share it with is S-R-U-G-G-E. That way I can look at it. Okay, so click on that and click Done. Your map is now saved. And again, if you want to change it or modify it, we'll do a lot more of that in class. Click Save again. And now you can close the map. All right, that's it for the preparation for this. Again, if you have questions, please send me emails. Otherwise, we'll see you on Friday.